Zealand Levy Amendment Bill introduction. That bill is set down for first reading. The House comes to oral questions. Question number one in the name of the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her government's statements and actions? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. When exactly did she decide that there would be no more regional fuel taxes while she is Prime Minister? Mr Speaker, in the same way that this government is not looking or considering at reintroducing the death penalty, this government never considered spreading a regional fuel tax. No decision was required because we never intended to expand it beyond Auckland. Why then did Winston Peters confirm yesterday that the decision was made on Wednesday last week? Shane Jones has confirmed it was made then. Phil Twyford has confirmed it was made then. And Michael Wood said it was made then as well. Mr Speaker, in the uh, roughly December, I believe, of uh, last year, uh, in conversation as we were discussing the fact that in law, we would be ruling out the ability to spread the regional fuel tax. We discussed the intention, my view, that it would not go beyond Auckland. I simply made public something that had already been discussed as a government. Yeah. Was Phil Twyford wrong to say on Thursday last week that he knew about it quite earlier yesterday, that is Wednesday, the Prime Minister gave me a call and asked me what I thought about the idea of ruling out future regional fuel taxes. We had a conversation about it and agreed it would be better to just rule out future regional fuel taxes. Mr Speaker, he also made reference to the conversation the previous year where we discussed that this would not be extended beyond Auckland. Mr Speaker, let's come back to the reason we're even having this discussion. That member spread false information, false information around this government's plans. And in order to put a line in the sand to point that he was utterly wrong, we made sure that there was no question left in anyone's mind beyond this term because he was spreading false information. Is she really saying that Phil Twyford hadn't been talking to the Mayor and the Council at Wellington City Council. Mr Speaker, I am really saying that we were not and will not spread a regional fuel tax beyond Auckland. Was her Associate Minister of Transport, Shane Jones, wrong to say that he only found out about the uh, stopping of the regional fuel taxes, quote, when the Prime Minister stood up? Look, Mr Speaker, uh, as I have already said, last year we were having this conversation and again, and again, it's there for all to see in the fact that we put it in law that for this term of government it would not happen. I've simply confirmed that that will be in perpetuity as long as I am Prime Minister. Well, what was the Cabinet Committee that supposedly this was talked at and how come no one else can remember the conversation? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, again, I come back to the original reason we are even having this discussion. Somehow the member thinks the fact that we put in law that this wouldn't be happening for three years. Now the fact that I'm saying it won't happen for, say, between nine and 12 years, or forever, however long I'm Prime Minister, this is not groundbreaking news. We'd already put it in law. Why did her government grant residency to Carol Trubeck? Uh, Mr Speaker, again, to correctly, uh, to correctly uh, categorise the decision that was made, uh, my understanding is that he already had residency, albeit an incorrect, incorrect name. It didn't answer the question. Oh, but point of order. Point of order, Mr Speaker. I asked why, and that wasn't uh, addressed. Well, I think that the question was certainly answered. It was corrected, but answer. What is her response to the Dominion Post this morning, which said, quote, so yes, Prime Minister, we have read between the lines. Our reading of it suggests that Shrewbeck is a person of poor character, 
a criminal who cannot be trusted, who arrived here under false pretences. He should be deported. You have got this wrong. Mr Speaker, again, as that member should know, given that uh, when he was in office there were roughly 100 deportations cancelled, that from time to time ministers uh, do have information put in front of them that make for very difficult decisions. And I have seen information that would suggest, from the information reports, that suggests that they have been in very similar circumstances. Isn't it clear? that her government has prioritised a dangerous criminal's welfare over public safety, contrary to her statement that any further offending actions by Karen Trubeck, quote, sits with this individual, anything further is off the minister's conscience and it's on theirs. And, Mr Speaker, that uh, is um, being made absolutely clear by the Minister uh, that he has put into writing that anything further uh, would mean uh, that he would automatically be deported. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, on the face of it, of course, it looks like an obvious decision, which demonstrates that from time to time, ministers in this position do receive additional information. What we have to make sure is what we have to make sure, Mr. Speaker, is that that information that the minister makes the decision is consistent and clear, and that's for officials to ensure that they've provided that. Subject question. The right hon. Peters. Has the prime minister been told why the National Party let this man in? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I've been not been privy to uh, any uh, information in that regard. Isn't it the case that since the early 2000s, Carol Schrubeck has been back to the Czech Republic, and doesn't that make any decision by Annelise Galloway ridiculous? Uh, Mr Speaker, the Minister made the decision based on the information he had at the time. And Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, he is no different. He is no different to any other minister of any political persuasion. They have to deal with the information provided to them by officials. Mr Speaker, if there is, if there is information that contradicts the basis on which the minister made the decision, then that would be for him to go back to the officials and seek further advice. I would have an expectation that he would do that. Did she and the minister not know He'd been to the Czech Republic uh, since the early 2000s, and is she going to fess up? They just got this clearly badly wrong. Mr Speaker, every minister does rely on the advice that they're provided by officials. And, Mr Speaker, the minister is no different in that regard to the last minister who, made, who overturned 108 deportations. We are all, as ministers, are reliant on the information we're provided. Again, if there is anything that contradicts the information that's being provided, it is for the minister to go back to officials, and it would be my expectation he would do that. The right hon. Minister Peters. On the basis of Mr Bridges' question, how many times did the National Party let this man back in New Zealand? <laughs> Well, the, no, the, the question of him coming and going was raised by Mr Bridges. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do not have specific... <laughs> ...to the National Party. Uh, the Prime Minister has no responsibility for the yeah, National Party. Yeah, yes, but the, the, I'm going to ask the member to rephrase the question. <laughs> right, who... On the... No, 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 sit down, please. I'm, I'm, I want to deal with whoever interjected then. Laura, I did, Mr Speaker. Right. Because it's not your That's job. six anymore? Yeah, OK. It's worth it. That's ten supplementary questions will be taken from the National Party today. Well, what's the point being? The right yeah. Honourable Winston you can't ask. On the basis of information being given to this House in good faith, has the Prime Minister been appraised of the number of times this man came back into the country and who was the, in the government at the time? Uh, Mr Speaker, obviously members will draw their inference from the fact that we have only been in government for um, 12 months. Again, though, I reiterate that a minister would make a decision based on the information in front of him, and we would all have a fair expectation uh, that if there is information to contradict that, uh, that we would expect the minister to go back to his officials. 
Question number two, the Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is